Cash and UBS Director of Floor Operations. He joins us now on the CNBC Newsline. Art, it's always great to get your perspective on things. Um, what, what do you make of all that Fed speak yesterday and where the markets stand today? Well, first of all, listen, I hope you're getting overtime. They've got you carrying the ball <laughs> day and night these days. Um, the uh, Fed speak yesterday, I think people might have overrated Bostic a bit. Uh, yes, the stock market uh, moved up, but I think part of that was internal. If you look at what happened with the dollar and to some degree what happened with yields, they did not move markedly uh, after Bostic. But we'll get a chance to see that again. He's going to be uh, uh, talking late morning uh, along with one or two others. Um, and to the conversation you and David were just having about um, the impact of higher rates, um, keep your eye on the commercial property area. You know, we we had one big default yesterday, and with the three-day week going around, I think uh, commercial property is going to be a problem. And we've got uh, a uh, Bank of Japan meeting coming up with a lot of rumors they're going to change their uh, – a negative interest rate po policy, and guess what? The Fed has stopped being an aggressive buyer of U.S. Treasuries, and if the Japanese people stop being an aggressive buyer, that's going to force rates and yields higher, too. You know, you mentioned that, uh, Art, and I'd love to come to you on QT. I feel like we don't talk about it or think about it as much as we might, but you just raised that prospect. Is it going to start to bite a bit more as we get towards the end of the year, if they continue, obviously, to, to, uh, to reduce the balance sheet? It is, and, and it's been a little subtle, David, because, you know, they talk about it, but they're implementing it rather slowly. I mean, uh, you know, we've gone from, uh, you know, in the trillions down merely, <laughs> I, I bite my lip when I say this, merely a couple of hundred billion um, but I think, yeah, I think that everybody's watching interest rates and what's happening behind the scene, um, the uh, quantitative tightening, the uh, money supply dropped the greatest, its growth dropped the greatest since any time since the Great Depression. Now, they had shoveled money in, so its effect is not going to be dramatic immediately. But I think we've got all these tiny ticking time bombs uh, to keep an eye on. So, yes, I agree with you. People aren't watching QT as closely as they should. You know, Ari, going up back above 4 percent was was a moment in the markets that we all were observing very carefully. And granted, we, we simply reclaimed a level that, that we saw, you know, in the fall. But still, markets digested that move very well. You say there's actually a level uh, that you're watching on the 10-year yield in terms of where the markets will find trouble. Uh, yeah, if it gets back above... Uh, 4.10. Uh, I, I think that'll begin to put pressure on it. Um, we, we, we were ready for an actually um, significant, almost almost climactic test yesterday, and Salesforce uh, threw a major curveball to the market. One stock influenced it. At one point, it almost put 200 points into the Dow. At the close, it put over 120 points in. When everything else was selling off, we were going to go for that test of the important level of 39.25 to 39.40, and and uh, we got turned away. Now we're back up above 4,000. A lot of resistance here between 4,000 and 4,025. So the viewers have places to watch. You watch the yield if it gets up above 4.10. Uh, you watch the rally. Can it get above? Uh, 4025, or will we reverse? I think by my working on my cocktail napkin charting process, uh, it looks to me like the oversold bounce that we got out of Salesforce yesterday, the influence on the market, might carry on until maybe Tuesday of next week. And then I think we go back to putting pressure on the market and retest lows.